I remember just saying out loud for the first time ever, like, I don't love racing. And I was like, oh my God, what'd I just say? So this will be my last uh, season as a full-time driver. My sister told me I was supposed to get emotional. <laughs> I said I wouldn't. What made 2017 the hardest year of your career? Well, for various reasons. I mean, like, my primary sponsor left, and I'd never been in that scenario before. And then it was about what team to go to, but then me going like, hmm, like, I'm not going to take a step down. Like, I'm not going to go to a team that doesn't, wouldn't presumably give me a, the same, if not a better chance of, of performing and doing well. Um, so, yeah, it was the decision about what I needed to do with my life moving forward and if I was going to hang on a little longer and just sort of take a performance cut and a pay cut and just continue to be out there because I didn't know what else to do or just take a leap of faith and move on. Rook was saying when uh, bad stuff would happen in 2017, you would text her. What sorts of texts would you send? Um, oh man, well, you know, I had, uh, I had, you know, work drama, relationship drama. Like, I mean, my whole life was shifting. Like, uh, the biggest decisions, like moving, leaving a relationship, l like quitting my, like, letting go of my job and doing something else. Um, there was just, there was a lot going on. How did you juggle um, everything going on? Compartmentalize. I think drivers are pretty good at that because we go from smiling, taking photos and shaking hands 10 seconds before getting in the car to drive 200 miles an hour. So, you know, just flipping that switch of like work weekend, oh my God, deal with life. Work weekend, deal with life. Um, so yeah, you just flip flop back and forth and get by. So I, I was surprised uh, when I, I read this, you said sometimes you'd be disappointed in a race when you realized you weren't even halfway through the race. And then in IndyCar, you would do these mind exercises to stop yourself from feeling miserable. Um, the last time you genuinely enjoyed racing, you think would be when? Oh, what an interesting question. Hmm. Every now and again, there'd be a run. <clears throat> in a race where it was just like magic. And I can remember one at Richmond. So I feel like that was something, that one of them last year. And I feel like I like passed half the field in one run. Like it just was amazing. What was involved for you in getting to the mental space where you realize I, I don't love racing anymore? Uh, actually it happened years ago. Um, I remember sitting in my girlfriend's kitchen in Scottsdale and, you know, we were having a deep conversation and I remember like breaking down and there was various things going on in my life, like work, relationship and, you know, whatever. And so I was feeling, I was vulnerable and I remember just saying out loud for the first time ever, like, I don't love racing. And I was like, oh my God, what'd I just say? And I was like, I lost it even more. And I was like, that's true. Like, I don't, I love parts of it and that's what's kept me going, but like the actual if I had free time, go to the track and drive around and have, no, like that doesn't interest me at all. I would rather go meditate. Um, <laughs> I just like, it just doesn't my, I just don't, it's not, doesn't sound fun to me. Mm -hmm. um, now, mind you, I, you don't do something for 27 years and, you know, get to the level I was at without, you know, loving it. You just like, there was parts of it that I loved the most. So yeah, that was back probably, I feel like that was like the end of maybe 14 or something. It was years ago. And, um, you know, think nothing of it. I mean, I didn't have any intentions in stopping at all. And then, you know, years go by and um, then 17 comes and, you know, primary sponsor leaves. And, and uh, I don't want people to think that they left because they were bought by private equity. Then usually then at that point in time, they stopped using, spending advertising dollars. And, you know, that's what we were as a race team was advertising. So they left and, and uh and then at the same time, my wine launches, my clothing line launches, my um, book is, uh, you know, f well underway and launches at the beginning of the next year. And um, so I was in the midst of doing a, a trial run with, um, with the workout program for the book at that point in time. And so um, 
I had all these other things going on. And so, you know, when they, at first, in the beginning of 2017, I thought to myself, like, oh no, I'm not ready to be done. Like, and it felt good to say that. It felt good to feel that. And then as time went on, I just realized, nah. And the year wasn't any good anyway. And it was like one more reason, like, what, maybe probably have it be like this again. I mean, I've tried every which way possible. I've done everything I possibly can to be successful and, and run, run, run well, and it just doesn't feel like it's for me. And so why do I think that, you know, it's gonna change?